January 20th marked 27 years since the death of opposition doyen Jaramogi Oginga Odinga. And years later, family and friends continue to celebrate the life of a man they say helped shape Kenya's political landscape. Citizen TV's Chemutai Goin spoke to some members of the Odinga family that fondly remember their patriarch as a firm but loving man that played a critical role in setting a strong foundation for the family and the nation. The late Ramogi Oginga Odinga started life off as a teacher turned businessman. In 1947, he resigned as a teacher to found the Lua Thrift and Trading Corporation, a business that sought to unite the Lua community and empower them economically. They had the idea of introducing uh, um, the idea of people saving, borrowing, and paying to develop themselves. Home and away, Jaramogi had a hands-on approach to all aspects of life. He valued education and he didn't discriminate whether you were a girl or a boy. He wanted us to do well in school. So he would treat you well depending on how well you were doing in school. He was gentle, especially with the girls. The boys, I'm not sure, they will talk for themselves, but I think them they got a taste of the cane. Akinyi says unlike perceptions out there that they were born with a golden spoon, life for them was not any different from that of any other regular family. We were like all the other families, you know. I get surprised when they keep talking about dynasty. We didn't even know that we were any different from anybody else. Mm -hmm. There were always other children relatives or others, some not even uh, relatives who would stay with us and they were treated exactly like us. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we, we grew up more or less like everybody else. In the early 50s, the struggle for the independence began picking up pace, particularly in central Kenya, where the white settlers had occupied most of the land. In Nyanza, however, the agitation was not as strong. During that period, Jaramogi had already joined founding father Mze Jomo Kenyatta in the Kenya African Union and never looked back. He stood with him until the period he was arrested and was detained as part of the Kapenguria Six. Before Africans were allowed to serve in parliament, all the eight regions were represented by white settlers. Later on, when the Legislative Council Legco admitted Africans, the late Jaramogi Oginga Odinga represented central Nyanza region. At this time, Mze Jomo Kenyatta had been detained and Jaramogi's first assignment was to secure his freedom. Uh, Jaramogi was uh, alone in the agitation. Jomo Kenyatta, the governor, had called him the leader to darkness and death. Mm -hmm. uh, Jaramogi insisted that uh, the continued detention of Kenyatta is an insult to the African people. Mm -hmm that they are the true leaders of the African people and until they are released from detention, there will be no independence. Mm -hmm. That was a very strong belief of, uh, of, of Yaramogi. Dr. Oboru says his father grew so emotional about his relationship with Mze Jomo Kenyatta that when anyone opposed him, he would lose himself over the matter. But a little later, the relationship soured. Varied accounts claim clashing political and economic ideologies separated the two old men. Jeremogi believed in uh, an approach which was more socialist, uh, socialist uh, I mean socialistic in nature. But Kenyatta believed in uh, the capitalist uh, way of development. Mm -hmm. Kenyatta and Jaramogi's ideological differences kicked off soon after independence. Yeah, he uh, advocated for uh, uh, giving land to the Mau Mau who had come from the forest. Mm -hmm. But uh, Kenyatta uh, believed that uh, the Mau Mau would get later. Kenyatta told him, Oginga, oh, you are very foolish. <laughs> You take yours first, <laughs> and then you, <laughs> you consider yeah. the years later on. As the disquiet between Kenyatta and Jaramogi worsened, Kenyatta unleashed his wrath on him. Auctioneers were sent his way. He was detained, and this took a toll on the family. Dr. Obura at one point asked him to abandon politics, but his father was adamant. I remember him telling me that uh, what is in my heart is what you are telling me to leave. More than three quarters of it is politics. I'm, I must struggle for my people. And that is what my life is about. Mm -hmm. 
My life is about struggling for the people up to until the people get their fair share of the national cake and the cake must be developed mm -hmm. but the people must get their fair share. When the frustrations intensified, with Jaramogi constantly undermined by other junior government officials, he opted to resign. Uh, I asked him, why didn't you just uh, persevere and, uh, and uh, continue as the VP and enjoy the, the perks mm -hmm. uh, which of, of, a, of a VP? Yes. yes. Like the same situation the, the, of, of Ruto now with, yes. with Uru. Because he was very popular and he thought it was going to be to use that popularism to, to take over the reins of power and change things the way he thought mm -hmm. it was possible. But he later learned that he made a mistake. Despite being in the shadow watching his father struggle, Oburu says both he and his younger brother, ODM leader Raila Odinga, both aspired to join politics and their father was instrumental in shaping them. Dr. Oburu says his father's dream was a united Kenya. He did not uh, believe that uh, uh, this or that community should be higher or superior to the other. He believed that Kenya is one nation and that nation is moving like a river and that river is to achieve prosperity for all Kenyans. During Kenyatta's detention, Jaramogi was approached by the colonialists to take up the position of Mze Kenyatta. We cannot be, we cannot in any sense be more advanced than our teacher and master whom I think is much more advanced in political outlook in this country than we are. We are still in just in the stages of learning politics from him. Many saying the man now known as the doyen of opposition missed out on a golden opportunity to finally get what he later struggled for to his death. He told me that uh, the Kikuyus as a community are the ones who went to the forest and fought against the colonial authorities. Mm -hmm. And they fought and they shed blood. That blood would have continued to be shed if I took, if I took uh, power. Secondly, Kenyatta taught me politics. And I thought it was dishonest for me to take power just because the colonialists want the people to forget about them. In early August, Dr. Oburu stirred the honest nest when he said that they were confident that Raila Odinga would clinch the presidency in the upcoming general election since the system was now on his side. But what did he mean? I believe uh, that Raila has won the last three elections and the reason why he never became president is because he was rigged out. Though we are not in system ourselves, we are not part of the system, we are in the opposition, but we are more friendly to the system. We are more friendly to the uh, we are friendly to the president, and uh, we have created peace to enable him to function and carry out his uh, functions well. Uh, it is my belief that he might not want to use that system against us again. Dr. Oburu also chickly responding to Deputy President William Ruto's statement to Raila Odinga that even if he appointed his brother the IEBC chairman, he would still win the election. Oburu is a simple, honest and open person. I don't hide. And I wish he himself could advocate for me to be made chairman of IEBC. I will be very fair and uh, I will make him the president if he wins. Thank you. And I will. <laughs> Chimutai Goin, Serzan TV, Nairobi.